What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are in Charleston, South Carolina here to talk about Lavinia Fisher. She was America's first female serial killer. Or was she? So who really was Lavinia Fisher? Popular urban legend states that she was America's first female serial killer. She was born in 1793. And what we know about her, other than the fact that she was good looking, was that she was married to a man named John Fisher. Now the Fishers operated a couple of bed and breakfasts called the Five and Six Mile Wafer House. Of course, they were named those because they were five and six miles north of Charleston, respectively. Now, the story goes that when travelers passing through Charleston, either going up north towards Maryland, perhaps, or they were going down south towards Florida, Georgia, they would stop at this inn and she would just ask them, oh, hey, how are you doing? Uh, ask them about their lives. Ask them if they were married. Uh, ask them what they did for a living. Oh, you're a broker. Ah, a broker. Maybe he has money. She was a very humble host. She would serve the men tea. And in this tea was some kind of a narcotic where it would knock them out and put them to sleep. And then she would just come into their rooms and bash their brains in with whatever blunt object she felt like using at that particular time. Or maybe her husband did it, John. Also, if she didn't feel like bludgeoning to them to death, in the bed, she would have a trap door. And this trap door, it would fall and it would land into a pit of spikes. Or sometimes those spikes were snakes. And the snakes would eat you. That's what happened. Now, contrary to popular belief, that is not the case. Lavinia was not a serial killer. She wasn't going into the men's rooms, bludgeoning them to death, whatever blunt object she felt like using. But she was a part of a gang of highway robbers. So basically, they were going around the Charleston area robbing people. And back in those days, back in the early 1800s, going through the mid-1800s, Highway robbery uh, was a offense punishable by death. So around 1819, Lavinia, along with her husband, John, and several of their conspirators were caught. Now, when they were caught, originally they were granted bail well except the fishers the rest of their gang were granted bail now it was very um there was big news back in charleston when they got caught because the fishers were very popular people uh, by all intents and purposes they were nice people and they were very very popular in the area So at the latter end of 1819, they go on trial and they are found guilty of highway robbery, but they are allowed to appeal their case. Their appeal will be heard in January of 1820. Now, while they're in jail, they in a jail cell and they're allowed to be in there together. So they start planning their escape. They want to get out of there because of course, they know they're guilty and they know that the judge can sentence them to whatever he feels like. It's up to his discretion. It was not a jury trial. It was one man, one judge. He decides whether you're innocent or guilty. So just like they do in the old movies and the cartoons, the Fishers start uh, getting linens like bed sheets and they start tying them together to make a rope. So John goes first, he lowers himself out of the cell, I guess he was able to saw the bars off or maybe uh, maybe there were no bars, uh, who knows? Uh, 
the security at the jail was pretty lax, so they're probably not even thinking that these people are able to escape. So John lowers himself and he's home free. It's probably one, two o'clock in the morning. There's not a soul around. It's quiet as all get out. So as he's about to hit the ground, the rope breaks. And the bed sheet falls down to the ground. And now John is free. He can leave if he wants. And Lavinia, she's still up there. She's like, okay, like, what are we going to do now? And to give that guy credit, you know, when you're facing possible um, life in prison or execution, uh, you know, you could just leave your wife and just say, oh, sorry, toots, uh, you know, hey, good luck in the afterlife or what have you. But uh, no, he, he didn't leave. He didn't leave his wife. He couldn't do it. You know, he loved that woman. So he basically knocked on the door of the jail, banging it on the door for the jailer to let him in. And he's like, yeah. I tried to escape, but uh, yeah, I, think I had a change of heart. So they promptly put him back in the jail cell and uh, they moved him to a different part of the jail uh, where it was a lot more difficult to escape. On February 4th, 1820, the judge denies the Fisher's appeal and they are sentenced to hang. So we move to the execution date, February 18th, 1820. Uh, John Fisher is a changed man. He's found Christianity. As the reverend is reading his last testament, if you will, to the crowd, John begs for his life. He says, I'm a changed man. Now, I'm willing to forgive you guys for wrongfully convicting me. But since you did convict me, I'm begging for your forgiveness. And they say, nah, we're not going to do all that. And then they go ahead and hang him. However, Lavinia, she was a different story. Uh, she didn't go to the gallows so gallantly like a lot of people do. No, she went kicking and fighting. Uh, she had to actually be carried to the gallow to have the rope put on around her neck. And as she's standing under the door... Uh, they say, do you have any last words? And she says, If anybody has a message for the devil, tell me now, because I'm surely going to meet him. And instead of her going through the trap door, she just jumped off. So she actually saved them a little bit of work in terms of, <laughs> you know, doing their job, if you will. So anyways, um, this is the jail. This is the execution site. Uh, this is the old Charleston jail. Uh, this was, uh, I think it was built uh, right at around 1802. And don't quote me on that. I'm remembering 1802. Uh, however, it was, uh, it, actually this jail was used up until 1939. And then it sat uh, empty for a while. So right now people are, you know, people bought it, so they're going to turn it into one of those uh, ghost tour things or what have you. But, uh, yeah, this would have been the site uh, where the Fishers were executed. And this place has a pretty uh, nefarious history. Uh, this was a place where, you know, they did public executions. Uh, even before the jail was built in the early 1800s, in the mid-late 1700s, they would bring people here to, you know, hang them. Uh, they would have barbecue here. Uh, they would invite you over for a barbecue. Unfortunately, you were the barbecue. And uh, oftentimes in the courtyard here, they would draw and quarter people. If you don't know what draw and quarter is, well, you tie a rope to somebody's arm, each arm, and then you tie a rope to somebody's leg, both legs, and then you tell horses, hey, go this way, go that way, and basically they separate you into pieces. Draw and quarter. Very, very nasty to say the least. And also, uh, this is the site where a slave revolt back in 1822, some boys tried to get the boys together to lead a slave revolt. And in that process, uh, eventually everybody was arrested. 67 people of all the people arrested were convicted and 35 of them uh, were sentenced to hang. So a quite a uh, interesting, uh, uh, you know, nasty history, but uh, history nonetheless. And... Uh, I'm assuming 
this is what it's gonna look like when the renovations are done. Okay. All right, it's gonna look nice. It's gonna look nice. So the boys are hard at work and the haunted jail tour. Okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to go to the supposed final resting place of Lavinia Fisher. Our final destination is the Magnolia Cemetery here in Charleston, West Virginia. We're about three miles away from the execution site of Mrs. Fisher. Now, you guys are probably wondering, well, how come you're not showing her grave? Where's her grave? I'm not gonna lie to you, I have no idea. I try to do as much research as I can within certain time constraints as much as possible. However, this story is odd. Number one, it involves a woman being executed, which wasn't really a thing back in the days. And even today, it's still not really a thing. Not very many women are on death row in this country. Number two, it happened 200 years ago. So it's bad enough as it is when I do a lot of stories when I'm reading up about stories that happened 50 years ago where things change. Uh, people's memories become fuzzy. There was no internet back in those days. There was no TV. There was no radio. There was newspapers, but where are those at? And after she was executed, if you want to believe, you know, people's websites or to find a grave, she could be buried anywhere from a pauper's grave one block away from the jail site. She could be buried at a pauper's grave, according to find a grave, which doesn't really mean much because anybody can make a find a grave, 14 miles outside of the city. Now, I personally don't believe that because I don't feel that in 1820, when they executed John and Lavinia Fisher, that they were going to want to cart their bodies away 14 miles or to, and then take a boat to get onto the island to bury them there. And then you got a couple of websites selling tours of the city who claim that she's buried where the tour takes place. 200 years I just don't know where she's buried and I'm not going to take anybody's word for it now this cemetery is three miles away from the execution site like I said I could see them bringing her here except here's the problem in 1820 this was not here now there was a house over yonder that was just being built they didn't start uh, construction on the cemetery and start burying people until 1851, I believe. So it remains to be seen where she was buried. I mean, after all, even the story goes to say that she was America's first uh, female serial killer. And here's the thing. Here's another thing that I didn't bring up. The facts of the case are very, very vague. Yes, she was hung in her wedding dress. Yes, she was being difficult during the execution, but the question of their guilt comes into play. I mean, were these people really even guilty? I mean, for all we know, they could have been witches. I have no idea. All I know is they were convicted of highway robbery, which again, was an executable offense back in those days. And that is it, I don't know. It's just one of those stories that too many years has gone by and I mean, hell, we don't even know if they were guilty. Who knows? What kind of evidence did they have against them, uh, you know, committing these crimes? Maybe they just had a safe place for robbers to come and stay in their bed and breakfast. And they got caught up in that. Who knows? Anyways, we will conclude the video here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just an interesting story about it you know a woman being executed and who knows who knows what really happened 
Anyways, live but not live, still alive by the grace of God. I'm Lamont at large. I will see you on the next vlog. Tell me in the comments what you think about that story. Peace out.